This is Ritter for On The Ritter Entertainment Blog, coming to you with the 2021 Major League Baseball trade deadline recap. This past Friday was the trade deadline. Usually it's been the last day of July, July 31st. This time it was July 30th on a Friday, and a lot of teams decided to have Thursday off in case they made trades that day so players can travel. So I'm going to go team by team. The Chicago White Sox bullpen this year, despite having some young pitchers who pitched well last year, struggled this year. And when struggling, you know, this year, the Sox are like, well, we need some help. So they go and acquire veteran relief pitcher Ryan Tapera, who closed games out before in Toronto, and a closer who's on a Hall of Fame trajectory in Craig Kimball. Two separate trades with the Cubs. Some minor guy for Tapera, who's going to be a free agent. Not upset about that. Cody Hoyer had potential. Don't know what happened to it. That's not a big deal. It's trading Nick Madrigal, even though he's out for the year. He's been a dude who's battled injuries multiple times in his limited major league and minor league career. Yes, he's supposed to be this good contact player, make, you know, play good defense, hustle. He's not a power hitting guy. He's trying to get on base. That's fine and dandy, but the Sox are hoping that if Craig Kimball solidifies his bullpen this season's run and next season's run, and the other addition they got was second base since he's out Hernandez from the Indians. That that if he's on the team this year, Hernandez, and next year we pick up his option and he plays for us as well. And we have the likes of Mendick, Leori Garcia, Makata can move back to second, and Jake Berger can play third base. They got potentials there. So it's wait and see with Nick Madrigal. But the Sox, I'm giving them an A- minus because of the Madrigal trade. But they solved the two issues. Two veteran relievers who have been closers, obviously, this year and years before, won a Hall of Fame trajectory, and a veteran second baseman who just won a gold glove last year and is always good at making contact, and he's perfectly suited to be number two spot. The Sox is not playing Gavin Sheets, Andrew Vaughn, or Yon Moncada second. That's where he's supposed to be. And little trade is they tra- they got this DVA Grulian dude from the Red Sox so they can have some catching depth. That's not a big deal. So the Sox got an A- because I'm not sure about the magical thing. And Cesar Hernandez, maybe they don't want to pick up his option and we have nobody. The Royals, they say goodbye to Danny Duffy and basically got a squad douche for him, which is probably why it's because they probably took a while to do it. And at the same time, he's making a lot of money. He's not the most healthiest. So that's probably why. So it's like, I'd probably give him a D because the players they got for both Solaire and Duffy, not so good. I was surprised they traded Solaire. The dude almost... Dude was all-star caliber for a few seasons in Silver Slugger level, batting out with Nelson Cruz. Who's the best DH? The fact that they traded to the Braves. That's on the Braves. who don't have a DH. But those are the two players they traded. I'm surprised they didn't trade more people. All they got in trades is they get Joel Payamps as a pitcher whoop de doo Twins, though, I can give them credit for trading Nelson Cruz, who's old, going to be a free agent. Jay Hop, who's old and going to be a free agent. Hanzo Robles, who they did sign this offseason, but he's a failed starting pitcher who's been a reliever bouncing from team to team. Those I understand. Jose Barrios, I was shocked they traded him because I thought they were going to trade Michael Pineda. They're going to maybe trade another reliever. They may have traded Josh Donaldson or even Byron Buxton. But the Barrios trade is the one where they get multiple prospects from the Blue Jays, and it can maybe help the Twins going forward. But the issue the Twins have always been They know how to produce position players. They sign position players. What they do not know is pitching. So Barrios is one of the few guys from that they've called up that they knew how to develop. Because the rest of this rotation are guys that they not develop. So that is why I'm surprised. They said we finally got successful with excuse me Jose Barrios, but then we end up trading him. And what they get back in that J Hap trade because the Nelson Cruz is like little pieces Robles. The Red Sox gave little pieces for him. The Cardinals give John Gant. John Gant has done everything you asked. Traded many times, started, spot started, swing men, long relief, middle relief. He's going to be value for them going forward because he's a controllable asset. So the Twins are hoping that whoever prospects they got for Cruz, Hanzo Robles, and Jose Marios work out. So I'm just going to say, you know what? They get a B because they traded two old guys who are going to be free agents. A journeyman reliever and their best pitcher, and they got process backs. Not sure, I'm not a Keith Law expert, but that's pretty good. The Indians, every year for years since the World Series, they've been getting rid of players. So when they signed Eddie Rosario to a one year deal, I knew they were probably going to get rid of him if they were out of the race. But he's injured right now, so they really didn't get that much back for him. Cesar Hernandez, the Sox gave something low 
and for them, not that big of a deal. They traded Phil Maton, who I wasn't familiar with, as a relief pitcher, and Jordan Luplo, one of their extra outfielders, and DJ Johnson, an extra reliever again. Two extra relievers and an extra outfielder. They get back Miles Straw, young defensive caliber center fielder from the Astros, and some other player. And they got Kung Fu Panda and the Eddie Rosario trade, but they just released him. So essentially, it was Rosario's hurt. He's going to be free agent. We just want to get rid of him. That's a, that's a you know, scratch on that. Cesar Hernandez, whatever the Sox came back, wasn't that great. And if Miles Straw can provide excellent defense, despite the fact they had Bradley Zimmer, Daniel Johnson, Oscar Machado, and Harold Mears, all all guys who are destined to be backup outfielders or platoon players, just adding Miles Straw, just another one of those guys, and then get rid of relievers, Phil Maytai, Tia Johnson, and it doesn't really that much. I'm going to give them a C because at least they traded two relievers, two outfielders, and a second baseman, and at least got Miles Straw back. Tigers, I'm surprised they didn't trade Candelario. It didn't work out this year to trade Wilson Ramos. It didn't work out this year to trade Nomar Mazzara. And it also did not work out for them to trade Matt Boyd because he was hurt. They didn't trade Michael Fulmer. They didn't play Soto or Jimenez or any other reliever. So all they did was, we have Daniel North. He's been a starter. He's been an op- He's been the guy who come in the middle of the game after an opener. And he's pitched more level situation. The Brewers have a good rotation. So he is not going to be starting for them. But as I said, starting pitcher experience helps them out. But the Tigers really didn't get that much back for him. So they were just saying goodbye because we don't need you anymore. So they get like a D because they didn't really do anything. Because I'm like, you trade one guy, you don't really do much. Then the Rays, who are in the playoff race, we already know they got Nelson Cruz. So that is a good move because that just gives them a consistent DH. Getting Jordan Luplo, when they have Brett Phillips and so many outfielders, it's overkill. The DJ Johnson guy is a throw and reliever, whoop de doo Orioles are not a great team, but they somehow managed to trade Sean Armstrong. That gives them a thing. That's cool. So they get themselves two extra relief pitchers because, you know, Nick Anderson's been out for the year. They've had some injuries to the whole entire pitching staff. And Nelson Cruz solidifies the offense. What I don't understand is the Jordan Lupo thing when they have enough outfielders. And then this. They trade Rich Hill despite the fact that Tyler Glasnow's going to have Tommy John surgery. Chris Archer hasn't been healthy. Colin McHugh and Michael Walker haven't been that great. And between Urinos and Yarborough, one's recovering from Tommy John and one hasn't been that good, that why trade a veteran starting pitcher? So that bumps their grade down. And after trading Alvarado last year, they traded Diego Castillo when Nick Anderson's already out. So you trade a starting pitcher when you need starting pitching, and you trade a closer reliever when you need relieving. So despite getting Nelson Cruz and two minor relief pitchers and another outfielder, they're getting a C- minus because Cruz is good. Extra bullpen help is good because they went and got GJ, JT Chargos who's been around the block. But three unknown relievers, an extra outfielder, and a 40-something-year-old DH, and you give up Rich Hill and Castillo when you got pitching woes, that's like a C-. minus. You don't understand what you're doing. The Rays have too many position players, so that's why I'm like, eh, whatever. The Red Sox. They DFA Brandon Workman and basically gave a few little players from the to the Twins to get Hansel Robles. That may help, that may not help, I'm not sure, because Matt Barnes is not the best closer, and their bullpen is not that amazing. So Robles hopefully helps. They get, get they get Kyle Schwarber, which again, J.D. Martinez is a quality DH. That's obvious. They revamped their outfield with Hunter Renfro in right field, calling up Duran, the prospect in center, and have Alex Verdugo, and have been playing Kiki Hernandez or Marlon Gonzalez or Danny Santana, super utility guys in the outfield, and it's worked out. And occasionally, J.D. Martinez has played the outfield. So there's no room in the outfield for him. And if you do DH him, J.D. Martinez would take away a bat from Verdugo or Hunter Renfro or Durant. He's now going to, supposedly when he comes back from the injury, he's going to take away bats from Bobby Delback, who's had a promising season. It's one thing to get Rizzo, who they drafted originally, and he helps the stretch run because he's clutch. But this trait makes no sense. And then they get this pitcher that nobody's ever heard of from the Pirates name, Austin Davis from Michael Chavis, who we all know that he's a third baseman. Devers plays there. He can't play there. Bobby Delbeck is taking over the first base job, and he can't really feel the second base. But he's back out this potential offensively, and the Red Sox just kind of gave up on him for nobody pitcher from the Pirates. Giving up, when you get pitchers from the Pirates, it has to be top quality pitchers for it to matter. So I don't understand the Schwerber trade. I don't understand trading Michael Chavis. Hanzo Robles helps. But then you say goodbye to Brandon Workman and DFAing him and stuff. So reality-wise, 
the Red Sox get like a C because you say they get a veteran relief pitcher, a veteran slugger, and an extra pitcher. But none of these moves are amazing. They didn't get an impact reliever, an impact closer, nothing. No impact starting pitcher, nothing. That's where I am like, eh. And then you get yourself to the Yankees where they say goodbye to Luis Sessa, who didn't make the rotation, so he's been a reliever. Say goodbye to lefty specialist Justin Wilson, and I'm saying to myself like, okay, Yankees, you've had injuries to your rotation with Kluber, Severino, you name it. Would you think maybe putting Luis Sessa or Losaya back in the rotation would be helpful? No. Trade Luis Sessa and Justin Wilson the same trade. Get nothing back for them. And your bullpen hasn't been the most healthiest either. So why would you give up Justin Wilson? They could say, well, we got Clay Holmes from the Pirates and Jolie Rodriguez from the Rangers. So they'll take those two guys' spots. Okay? Swapping the checks. The, the ch- deck chairs. whoop de do. It's actually a game with Pirates pitcher. Jolie Rodriguez, Rangers pitcher. I don't trust that. Then they go and get Andrew Heaney, which you know what? Heaney hasn't been that good this year, but he's been the best Angels pitcher not named Otani over the last couple of years. That is very helpful. Andrew Heaney will help them until Kluber comes back and Herman comes back to give them a guy to put in the third spot. Maybe Severino comes back. So that's why I'm like, that's a good trade. But then they get Joey Gallo with Joey Rodriguez, and they give up prospects. When, hello, you got Mike Stanton, Giancarlo Stanton as DH, who can't stay healthy and play the outfield. You still got Brett Gardner, Clint Frazier's going to come back, so it's not a big deal. And, yeah, you're playing this young guy, Floreal, and you've been training Greg Allen, and you're like, okay, we even played Tyler Wade in the outfield and Miguel Allen, do it. We need an outfielder. But you probably should have got an outfielder who can either play center field, so Gardner doesn't have to, and you don't have to waste offensively with Greg Allen and Florial, or get yourself a guy who can play outfield every day. Maybe. Joey Gallo, he's turned himself into an above-average corner outfielder, not a center fielder. And Aaron Judge is not a center fielder, so I don't want to see Judge playing center field or Gallo. You got too many sluggers in your lineup, which makes no sense. You go like, okay, maybe I play Joe Gallo first base. Nope, you got Luke Voigt. That made no sense. He led the American League in home runs last year and has been a pretty good hitter. Then they go get Anthony Rizzo, most likely to get, say, the Red Sox. You can't get him, but again, Stanton, Judge, Gary Sanchez, Glaber Torres, and then you go and you add Gallo, and now you add Rizzo and you got Luke Voigt. Are you going to play Rizzo first base, DH, Luke Voigt? Put Joey Gallo and and uh, Aaron Judge and staying in the outfield. That would be one of the worst defensive outfielders and just way too stupid. So overkill on Gallo, even though he's under control, so it's not a big deal. Overkill on Rizzo. Swapping out veteran reliever and a potential starting pitcher for two nobody relievers and getting Heaney. Heaney's the only saving thing. Heaney gives them a B minus because Joey Gallo and Rizzo make the lineup better. Heaney makes rotation better. But overkill on those two guys, I, I, I just don't get it. I have to give them a good grade because Gallo and Rizzo are quality players, but they just don't fit. That's why it's not an A, it's not a B, it's a B- minus because it's not like a C or D because they actually got good players. And the Orioles, they said goodbye to Freddie Galvis. They didn't need him, I knew it was just a stop holder gap. And then Sean Armstrong, and I'm like, okay. Orioles were able to get something back for a no-name reliever, cool. Phillies gave nothing for Galvis. That's Orioles. The Orioles already got rid of pitchers like Gosman and Cobb, and there's really nothing left for them to trade because the whole Matt Harvey, I don't think anybody wanted him, and Felix Hernandez didn't play this year for them after opting out, and LeBlanc left. So it's like they don't really have any tradable assets in the rotation, and they traded years ago every single reliever that's ever you've ever heard of. And none of their position players, Rui Ruiz, Yomer Sanchez, they, they didn't work out. None of that worked out. So for them, maybe they could have traded Pedro Severino. Maybe, but they did what they could do. They traded two players that they can get rid of. The A's. Okay, so Chad Pinder, Jed Lowry, Tony Kemp have been the likes who have played second base for them this year. So they said, you know, we're going to Josh Harrison. He'll add to the fact that Tony Kemp and Chad Pinder play everywhere, and he can play second base, he can play outfield, anything. Give people day off at other positions. That's cool. They get Jan Gomes. Because they've had a few backup catchers, Ramos Garcia and somebody else, but having Jan Gomes, veteran who's won a World Series, to back up Sean Arms, I mean, excuse me, Sean Murphy, that's a good move. They help you out for now with veteran presence. They get Andrew Chafin because losing Trevor Rosenthal this year and being injured and not having all those veteran relievers you want because they've already, you know, they have, they have Sergio Romo and they made this this Trevino guy their closer. They lost Hendricks in the off season, so and Soria in the off season. So, Andrew Chafin will help in the middle relief. So, that's that's a positive. 
as I said, getting Josh Harrison and Jan Gome, that's positives there for the team. They got Stalling Marte. I'm like, okay, cool. Stalling Marte will solidify right field. Piscotti's just been, eh, you know. He'll help out in the lineup so that you the two mats, Mitch Moreland, can have some offensive help in the middle of the lineup. I'm like, cool. The thing that I don't understand is the A's have been playing him in center field and batting him second. You got him to be a middle of the order bat. Secret there. He came up with the Pirates. He was playing right field because of Andrew McCutcheon. The season that McCutcheon moved to the out to right field, he and he played center. He barely played center field for the Pirates. It was then he went to the Diamondbacks, played center field briefly there, then went to the Marlins. So he's not a world class center fielder. He's battled injuries. He's been busted for PED. Please play him in right field because Ramon Laureano could have won a gold glove last year. He could have won a gold glove the year before. He has to figure out offensively, but if you had him defensively in center field, Marte in right field, you can withstand Mark Hanna playing left field, our super utility player playing the out, playing the outfield. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. But then they gave up Hazel Lozardo, who I thought was supposed to be an important part of this rotation going forward. But I guess not, so the Marlins now get another top pitching phenom like they've done in trades before. That's cool for them. But at the same time, so Josh Harrison, Jan Gomes, Andrew Chapin, sorry, Marte, four players that can help you out. But the trading of Jesus Lazardo is the thing that I don't understand. So I'm going to give them a B because you got a veteran second baseman been an alter team. You got a veteran catcher to help out your young catcher. You got a quality outfielder starring Marte and a quality veteran reliever named Chafin. So that's a B. The reason it's not an A or a B plus is trading A. Luis Rosardo and the continued play starring Marte in right field and bat I mean center field and bat him second. Astro, Kendall Graveman, Rafael Montero, Phil Mayton, Yimmy Garcia. They basically said we just had Ryan Presley, Joe Smith has always been hurt, and 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 Ryan Stanick and and Alvar Ryan Stanick, who they got, pretty much what has happened with the Astros is every veteran relief pitcher that they have in their bullpen has missed some time this year to injuries. And uh, that is why they say we need to start over from scratch and we need to do this. We need to go ahead and get guys because Pedro Baez is hurt. And uh, they said Ryan Presley was hurt. Ryan Stanek was hurt. And they're like, we just need to... Uh, to move on and get somebody. So by them getting, shuffling the deck here, and them getting Kendall Graven, who is good for the Seattle, Rafael Montero, who, like Hansel Robles, the journeyman starting pitcher who became a reliever, Phil Maton from the Indians, who nobody's really heard of, Yimmy Garcia, who was on the Dodgers, but on the Marlins this year. So you got yourself four relief pitchers to hopefully f help Ryan Presley with the bullpen. And all you got to do is give up Joe Smith, never healthy veteran reliever, Austin Pruitt, who, you know, you don't really need. Another pitcher they gave up as well. Miles Straw, who was a backup outfielder, but I feel like the Astros can call up anybody from their system to really be their fourth outfielder. And Abram Toro, who plays when Bregman's hurt and occasionally plays first base, who's just another corner infielder. So they get extra outfielder, extra infielder, a couple of no-name pitchers, and Joe Smith. I feel like they get a B because they... Supposedly improve their bullpen, they think, by getting four pitchers, trading a few pitchers away, and straining away Straw and Turo, who they don't really need. So the reason why it's a B is because Graven, Montero, Mayton, Yimmy Garcia, they're not high-quality players. They're just okay pieces, and two of them, like Montero and Graven, are failed starting pitchers or injury-prone starters who became relievers. So it's a B because they did what they wanted to was improve their bullpen because that was an issue going forward. I don't like them trading Miles Straw because he's been valuable, but still. And then the Mariners. They got... Diego Castillo, which again, I don't know what the Rays did, and that's a quality relief pitcher. Joe Smith as a veteran, that helps them out. And Abram Turo just adds to the Ty France playing out of position because they're both third baseman. You got Kyle Seeger. The continuation of Bowers and Shed Long playing the outfield. If you play Ty France or Turo at second base, and they're not second baseman. And they got Tyler Anderson, who is bouncing around for team to team journeyman. The Pirates are again just throwing away pitchers no matter what tried out the rotation that's had injuries to Paxton and some other guys. I'm like, okay, cool. But Graven pitched really well for them. Montero was okay, and JT Chargos is a veteran. So if you're saying that, okay, they give JT Chargos some nobody for Castillo, they won that. They get Turo and Joe Smith just for trading Graven and Montero, that's a plus. Getting Tyler Anderson, I don't know what they give up. So they get a B because of how good of a relief pitcher Diego Castillo is. That's quality. That guy can be a closer on any team. 
the reason it's not an amazing trade is because Kendall Graven was doing so well. Why trade him for Joe Smith, who's never been healthy, and Abraham Turo, who himself is another third baseman who has nowhere to play on this team. And Tyler Anderson, I don't really trust the Pirates and journeyman pitcher. So it's a B because Diego Castillo is that good. It's the Turo fit, the Joe Smith, but then giving up Kendall Graveman, who had a good season this year, and then getting Tyler Anderson, whoop de doo Then the Angels. They said goodbye to Andrew Heaney, so they traded one to start. I thought they were trying to trade Cobb. I thought they tried to trade Quintana. So, something more. They traded Tony Watson. I thought they tried to trade Claudio Chizik any single other reliever they possibly could, and they got rid of Dylan Peters. So they only traded one starter and one reliever, so that's why I have to see, because I don't really know in the end what really the Yankees are going to give that's worth quality for Andrew Heaney when they gave quality for Rizzo and they gave quality for Gallo. That's where I'm like, okay, so what left over for the Angels and Watson, the Giants, are not going to give that much because they just had him last year. So there's that. The Angels, as I get a C. They traded one starter, one rel- one reliever that you heard of and some extra pitcher. Then the Rangers, as I close out the American League version because I don't want these to go too long. Kyle Gibson, I knew at some point they are going to trade him. I'm surprised they didn't trade Jordan Lyles, but they traded Kyle Gibson and Ian Kennedy to the Phillies. I, and they got Spencer Howard and some players back. So hopefully Spencer Howard and those players help them out to build their team going forward by swapping in a veteran starting pitcher who's back, more of a back-end starter, Ian Kennedy, who... I still thought the last two seasons the Royals should have played him in the rotation when they needed pitching, and same thing with the Rangers. But the, it, the Phillies' bullpen have been so bad, and Kennedy's been okay as a relief pitcher for the Royals and the Rangers. That helps him out there. Getting over to Jolie Rodriguez just to throw in. Joey Gallo, I thought he was going to stay there for a while because he said, I can't play third base, Adrian Beltre. They made him play center field. He's not a center fielder. Never gave him a chance to be the first baseman or DH. He's gone. So that's why I'm giving them a C because... They didn't need to trade Joey Gallo. Not sure what prospects they're getting back for him. Same thing with Kenny Gibson. You don't know which of these prospects, or even Spencer Howard, are going to be good. That's why it's a C, C plus. C plus is prospects for Gallo, prospects for Gibson, and Ian Kenny and Joey Ramirez are just throwing. And Spencer Howard's supposed to be a good player. So that's why it's like a C plus because there was no need to trade Gallo. You're not sure what the Yankees give gave you, nor the Phillies gave you. That's overall going to be good because you gave up. Four players who were important to your team just for a bunch of prospects. Because I thought they could have done more. Traded Jordan Lyle. They could have traded every single relief pitcher they had. Maybe traded David Dahl. The Chris Davis thing didn't work out. They could have traded Brock Holt. They should have traded uh, Charlie Colberson. Something like that. But they did not. Thank you for listening to MLB Trade Deadline 2021 for the baseball season. For On the Radio Tablock, that was the American League. You're going to get the National League on the next video.